behind. The hand of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 24. The Bible says, O Lord God, you have begun to show your servant greatness. Today the Lord is going to show you greatness. Amen. He says, and your mighty hand for what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do anything like your works and your mighty deeds. I, I, let me read it again for emphasis so that everybody flows with it. It says, Oh Lord God, you have begun to show your servant your greatness. I don't know what you have been seeing in your life up until this point, but from this point on forward, you're going to see the goodness of the Lord. You're going to see the greatness of the Lord. Your service is not in vain. Who you are as a child of God has not been in vain. He reassures us this morning. He says, your mighty hand, by your mighty hand, for what God is there in heaven and on or on earth who can do anything like your works there is nobody who can match what you can do and your mighty deeds that you can do so we begin to understand from this scripture child of god that the hand of god can change any situation come on somebody somebody keep on typing the hand of the lord can change any situation hallelujah if if if, if it can change any situation that means it can take you from the pit and to the highest peak hallelujah we have been seeing throughout this week how the word of God assures us and shows us that we, it can take us to a mountain peak experience. Hallelujah. Mara official, I need you to share this live broadcast. Everybody who's on there, I need you to tap on there. I need to make sure that we are depopulating hell and we are populating heaven and we are making sure that we are taking as many with us to the peak experience. Hallelujah. I am rejoicing for the number of souls that are being won every single morning. I don't care what the devil tries to come and do every single morning on this broadcast. We are soldiering on. Hallelujah. And the souls that are being won have proved that God is at work, that the hand of the Lord is mighty and is changing situations and people's lives are being changed on this protocol, breaking prayer altar. Hallelujah. And if God does that and I am happy, hallelujah, the hand of God can change any situation. It can take you from the pit to the highest peak, hallelujah, meaning you are coming from a pit that people dig for you and you go to the highest peak because it says you are meant for a mountaintop experience. The hand of God specializes in, 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 in boycotting every protocol that, that, that takes a man from grass to grace, hallelujah. He can take you from a grass-eating position to a grace position, hallelujah. It breaks every protocol. Talk to me, somebody. Help me tell your neighbor the hand of God can break every every protocol. Hallelujah. When the hand of God wants to work in your life, uh, it does not look at your qualification. Talk to me, somebody. We're doing better. I can see that. Amen and amen. Uh, hallelujah. He goes ahead to do all that he has decided to do because when God decides to do something, nobody needs to add a cent to it. Nobody needs to add another uh, comment to it. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. So this morning as we kick off, I pray the hand of God shall locate you today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I am declaring and I'm decreeing. Yes, Masiko, you got it. You are in the spirit right now. You, the hand of God is taking you from zero level to hero level in the name of Jesus Christ. That shall be your testimony by the end of today in the name of Jesus Christ. In fact, by the end of this pro, uh, uh, this broadcaster, the Lord will, will take you from zero to hero level in the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of the Lord shall locate you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The hand of God can do so many things. Somebody is believing God is in the broadcast section and saying, Pastor, I'm about to be evicted. Here is the word that I'm hearing in my spirit. The hand of God can take you from being a tenant to a landlord. Maybe that God is just pushing you for you to have your own house now. The Lord is just releasing you. He says you have been meditating on it for too long. This is the time to take that step. Talk to me. The hand of God can take you from a location where you are to the location where your helper is. I don't know where your destiny helper is, but the Lord is saying to, to me that I must tell you that he is moving you to that location. Somebody shout again, the hand of, of the Lord. The hand of the Lord is at work. When the hand of the Lord is controlling your life, it drives you to where your helper is. It drives you to where your breakthrough is. It drives you to where your blessing is. 
is talk to me. Hallelujah. I pray for you this morning. I say the hand of the Lord will take you from where you are to where you want to be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. By destinies planned by the blueprint of God, you are being taken to where you need to be. I said we are going to look at four dimensions of the hand of God. The hand of God, firstly, will move you from destruction. We see this in the scriptures in Exodus chapter 5, verse 9 and 14. The Exodus chapter 5, verse 9 and verse 14, you read it in your own time. You see how the hand for, of God for destruction upon his enemies, he destroyed the land of Egypt. The strong hand of God located Pharaoh and destroyed the city. It doesn't cost God anything to visit your enemies and destroy them. Whatever touches you touches God. You are the apple of his eyes. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I said you are the apple of the Lord's eye. Whatever touches you touches God. And he is not lazy to visit your enemies and deal with them in their camp and destroy them, obliterate them, annihilate them in their camp in Jesus' mighty name. Therefore, I pray, my God, on this dimension of understanding what your hand can do, hand of God, I ask and I declare and I decree it, Lord, right now, arise for us and locate us anywhere we are. Arise and locate enemies wherever they are located, wherever they are hiding, making incantations against us right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, locate them and destroy them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The hand of God can destroy those that are worshiping idols. Talk to me, somebody. I have confirmation because the prophet Samuel tells me in the first Samuel chapter 5 verse 11, he confirms to me that the Lord is busy dealing with those who are engaged with idol worship. If your life is full of worshiping idols, you need to understand that you are at the risk of being visited by the judgmental hand of God. If I was you, I would decide that I would have only one God that I will serve. I will have one God that I will worship in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The things you love more than God, that thing is an idol. I want you to make up your mind that my love is reserved for God. My love is first reserved for God. He comes first in my life. God tested Abraham to see, to see what idol was in his heart by tasking him to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, that God had, and, and, and he, he sent this instruction, hallelujah. But thank God that he passed, Abraham passed the test, hallelujah. My question to you this morning, are you going to pass the test when the Lord sends that test? Your heart has to be full of love, the love of God alone, hallelujah, and nothing else. If your children Children, your wife, your cars, your husband, your bank accounts, etc., have taken the place of God in your heart, then those things are your idols. Be careful that you don't worship those things too much, because if you worship those things too much, there is a way that they can be shifted out of your life. So make sure that you first and foremost understand that all worship and glory goes to God. Do not make your husband or your wife an idol, or your bank account or your car an idol. You will be surprised how God operates. He says, I am after all, a jealous God. Talk to me, somebody. Mm. When material things perish and you don't have the love of God in your life, what will you be left with? You will be left with nothing. Somebody shouted one more time for somebody who's coming in later. The hand of God. The hand of God is at work. Talk to me, somebody. The strong hand of God can destroy your enemies without taking permission from you. The hand of God can destroy the enemies of the children of God without taking permission from you. The hand of God was upon David when Goliath came to torment them by spiritual, but that, that, even spiritually, he came to torment them. Hallelujah. But the hand of God was at work. Talk to me, somebody. The day you take on God, the day you allow God to fight for you, the day that they, you will see that your enemies will begin to leave you alone because there are some fights you cannot fight by yourself and you need the hand of God to fight for you. Talk to me. David understood his place. He understood what was upon him. He understood the challenge that he was facing when he was looking at his Goliath until you challenge the Goliath that is tormenting you. You cannot move. He understood that he had to arise. He had to let the Holy Spirit arise in him and empower him. Talk to me. God bless you. Anna, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, he said, I understand who I am. I understand that I have to take a step. I understand that the armies of the Lord are baking me. I understand that I'm moving with the Lord of hosts. Talk to me, somebody. He says, I understand that I cannot allow the situation to 
to torment me any further. I understand that I have to proceed and I have to move. I cannot be stagnant. I have to take a step and fight this enemy before me in the name of Jesus Christ. What happens tomorrow in your life is in God's hands. Yes, and the manifestation of that tomorrow, however, is in your hands. Oh, I just said something there. I said, what happens tomorrow in your life is in God's hands. And the manifestation of that tomorrow is in your hands. Do you understand? I hope I'm, I'm, I, I don't need to decode it further. What happens tomorrow in your life is in God's hands. But the manifestation of that tomorrow is in your hands. That manifestation, yes, it is God that will control the fact that you are alive tomorrow. But you have a work to do. Oh, don't join the school of thought that believes that tomorrow will be okay. And do nothing. Mm -mm. God wants you to work it. God wants you to work this word. God wants you to work your prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We believe, yes, we hope that tomorrow is going to be okay, but we're going to work our prophecy. We're going to work our mouth because he gave us this mouth to work it. Hallelujah. We're going to declare it and decree it. We're going to seal it. We're going to make sure there is no entry level at any point from the enemy's point. You must not be quiet. You must make up your mind. I will not be quiet. If Moses was quiet to God when they were at the Red Sea, God would not have moved. They would have been staring at the Red Sea like this and saying, what are we doing? We are seeing the Egyptians behind us, there is a sea, but God, but Moses had to speak. Tell your neighbor, speak. You have to speak. Whether you like it or not, you are on this protocol breaking prayer. Here we speak. We pray, we speak, we, we, we decree and we declare. You have to speak. Hallelujah. If Moses was quiet, the Red Sea would not have been parted. Hallelujah. It is what you say to God's ears that he will do. God wants you to, to hear you say it. Mm, Jesus, God wants you to hear. He wants to hear what do you want ha to happen to your enemies? Thank you, Jesus. God saw David's courage and the hand of God was upon him to destroy the enemy that was tormenting them. When the hand of God is upon you, it gives you access to enter into the enemy's house and to collect all your goods back. You've got access. You don't need an, a warrant of arrest. You don't need a warrant to enter, but he gives you access to enter the enemy and take what is yours. Last night, we took back what was ours. Last night, I was talking to the married spouses. I said, take back what is yours. You must speak. Speak in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. When the hand of God is upon you, you don't need anybody else to give you authority to access whatever it is that is taking things away from you and depleting you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you can enter the enemy's house and collect all your goods. If the hand of God did not appear, there was no way that Jehoshaphat was going to win. But God told him not to worry. And he said, just praise me. Jehosh Jehoshaphat had to just praise God. Anytime God says, don't worry, don't worry, leave it for me. You are guaranteed the victory. Hallelujah. I want to encourage somebody who's at the sound of my voice this morning and tell you, don't worry. Leave it to God. Let God fight this battle for you. You just speak what you need to happen. And he's hearing. He's not a deaf God. Talk to me. Only one word from God can silent all your battles. Amen, somebody. The passion for God's presence that you will have will bring a testimony into your life. Oh, Jesus. The passion you have for the presence of God in your life, it will make a way where there is no way. The enemies planned against Daniel and they threw him into the den of lions with the intention of killing and wasting Daniel, but the hand of God, somebody shout, but the hand of God. Somebody needs to understand that when the but comes, it changes whatever the status quo was. It changes the plans of the enemy that he had for you. But the hand of God. Somebody tell your neighbor one more time, but the hand of God. Hallelujah.
They wanted to ransack him. They thought the lion was going to devour him, but the hand of God had to step in. Talk to me. I don't know what lion of dens that you are, your den of lions you are in, but right now the hand of God, the Lord is saying, but the hand of God, but for the hand of God, your breakthrough is here. But for the hand of God, you are passing that test and that exam. But for the hand of God, you are getting that job in Jesus' mighty name. But the hand of God will make sure that your waiting will even give you a salary that you did not expect. They will even die double it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus, but for the hand of God. The hand of God appeared in that den of lions and it quieted the mouth of the lion. Hallelujah. It shut up the mouth of the lion. I want somebody who is brave this morning and say, I woke up to shut up the mouth of the lion. Whatever lion that has been roaring at me, I am here to shut you up and remind you that I come from the lion. I'm, I'm coming from the lineage of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Therefore, my roar is bigger than your roar and my roar comes with results and rewards. My roar will make sure that I I get what I want. It does not come back empty handed. The hand of God can remove anything that I don't want in my life. The hand of God can remove sickness and the hand of God can remove poverty. Therefore, I stand this morning believing and standing with the other saints. I'm standing in the gap for those who are sick in my family. I'm standing in the gap for generations that will still come in my family. I say poverty be removed. Sickness be removed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Sickness and poverty held the Israelites and kept them in one place. But because you are the carrier of God's glory, your glory cannot be stopped in Jesus' mighty name. Chido, I said your glory cannot be stopped in the name of Jesus Christ. The second dimension of the hand of God is the hand of God that can be for deliverance. Somebody came here this morning and what you need is deliverance. Hallelujah. I'm here to announce to you that the hand of God is available for you for deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. He delivered Samson from evil lions. Hallelujah. The lions appeared and the hand of God came upon Samson to be able to tear them up in Jesus' mighty name. He also delivered Daniel from the lion's den so he can also deliver you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You need to understand that the hand of God is faster than A. It, I don't know how, how fast A travels or how fast the wind travels, but the hand of God is faster than that. The hand of God is faster than light because he is even light self. Hallelujah. Shut that mouth of that lion. Hallelujah. But God, shout it again and say, but God, but the hand of the Lord, but the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord is intervening for somebody. The hand of the Lord is faster than any wind, any air, any storm. It is faster than any enemy. Talk to me, somebody. The hand of God appeared in Jericho and brought a mighty wall down. It was not just a miniature wall. It wasn't like an itty, itty. This is what, not a Lego wall. This was a big wall where they, we are told that chariots were able to travel on the walls of Jericho, but those walls came down. Let your praise go up. Let, don't magnify the depression. Don't magnify the problem. Magnify your praise and worship. Hallelujah. And the walls of Jericho, the walls that are resisting you, the walls that are blocking you, they will fall down. Tell your neighbor they will fall down. They're coming down. The walls are coming down in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever difficult situation in your life, it can be pulled down by the hand of God. The hand of God came upon Elijah and he moved faster, even more when the chariots were chasing him. Hallelujah. Oh, he moved more than the chariots. He moved faster than the chariots. Talk to me. When the hand of God comes upon you, then even your business will move faster. Oh, Jesus. Somebody needs to receive that right now. This is a declaration. This is a prophetic declaration I'm hearing. He says, tell your business that the hand of God is moving faster. Tell your marriage that the hand of God is moving faster. The hand of God is upon your ministry. The hand of God is upon your marriage. The hand of God is upon your business. Hallelujah. And it is faster than anything that is trying to slow it down. Hallelujah. It is moving you forward. You are moving forward by the hand of God, but for the hand of God. Hallelujah. The solution to a man's life, whatever the solution you have been waiting for, it is the hand of the Lord, but the hand of God. It is the solution that you have been waiting for in Jesus' mighty name. That thing that you are expecting that hasn't come, I am here to tell you this morning, be patient, Vimbai, be patient. It will come by his hand. It will come by the right hand of the Lord. It will come by the mighty hand of God. Instead of trusting in the hands of men, instead of trusting in, in, in other people, hallelujah, it will come by the hand of God.
Many people depend on the hand of men and they end up in disappointment. But when God has orchestrated the right men to come and give you what you need, you understand that this destiny helper is operating by the hand of God. Those that disappointed you, they were not from the hand of God. Those that disappointed you, they aborted their calling and their blessing that would have come had they helped you. Whatever you commit into the hand of the Lord will not fail in Jesus' mighty name. Romans 10, 11 says, as the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. I say it again, anyone who trusts in the Lord shall never be put to shame. You will never be put to shame. Tell yourself that right now. Declare it in your life right now. Decree it in your life. I will not be put to shame. Oh, neighbor, you need to understand that if you trust him, he will never put you to shame in the name of Jesus Christ. Hold on to God and he will definitely answer you. It's just a matter of time. Can you help me text somebody and tell them it's just a matter of time? It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Time, time. It's just a matter of time. 10 days is like one second to him. A thousand years, it's like a one day to him. It's just a matter of time. You will not be put to shame, Megan, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He will surely come through for you. Most times when God is guiding your journey with his mighty hands, you still don't know what, what God, and, 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 and you, you don't know what he has done for you. Hallelujah. But God has kept you. Sometimes the enemy tries to, it's like you have a, a amnesia because you are facing this particular problem at this time. You are thinking, oh God, I don't know. Are you really there for me? But he's actually done so much for you before. You've got the credentials and the, and the CV that proves that he has done so much for you and he can do even much more in Jesus mighty name. He has kept you. You are not an expert driver, yet the Lord keeps you. You are not the expert at your life, but God is the one who's the expert. He's your manufacturer. He keeps on keeping you. He keeps on making sure he made sure you showed up this morning and you are awake this morning. The hand of God will never make you to crawl, but it will make you to fly. Make up your mind and declare it right now and say, I'm flying. I'm not crawling. No longer will I crawl, but I will fly. The hand of God is more powerful than your certificates combined. It's more powerful than your PhD. It's more powerful than your master's degree. It's more power, powerful than the honors and every other certificate that you are hanging on the wall. He's the one that gave you those certificates. You need to understand that he's more powerful than that. You can have all those things and doors still not open. And what you need is the hand of God. Oh, Jesus, your certificate can be swept under the bed. But when the hand of God comes upon you, it takes you from zero level to hero level. The hand of God moves faster than your certificate. Then you will come back and testify and say, Pastor Fortune, you said it. They didn't even ask me for my certificates. They knew I did not qualify. They still gave me the job. Talk to me, somebody. I don't know how I got the land. I don't know how I got that loan. I don't know how my business got selected for that contract, but I don't know. It is bad for the hand of God. It's bad for the hand of God. Hallelujah. When the hand of God is upon you, people must respect you when they see you. You will understand that you don't have to demand it from them. You don't have to say you must respect me, but you will be amazed that people are bowing to you. Hallelujah. They are respecting you automatically because they see there is something that is upon you and that is the hand of God. When the hand of God it is on you, it gives you that dignity. You are a dignified person. Doors are open for you. People respect you automatically. They respect your authority. When you come in and when you speak, they know that your words carry weight. The hand of God is upon you. Your siblings may fight you. They may, they may say you are not needed in, in family meetings because you are younger, but they don't understand that the spiritual authority is on your head because the hand of God is upon you. Oh, Jesus. They don't understand when your parents have to say, let us hear what, 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 what Bukhali has to say. Let us hear what Sisi has to say. Let, let us hear what Abena has to say. It is because you are carrying the anointing. You are carrying the oil to speak in that family over and above the firstborn. They don't understand that the birthright has already been exchanged. Oh, Jesus. Let me not go there. Somebody say, but the hand of God. Hallelujah. When the hand of God is upon you, there is an identity that you carry. The hand of God can make you to be honored where presidents are. Hallelujah. Where presidents are not even honored, you may be honored. Hallelujah. 
It will cause you to be honored. People who are thinking that they are in charge, people who are thinking they are bosses, that I know some of you who have been going through this, I don't know whether to call it a syndrome or whatever it is in your workplace where your boss is feeling threatened about you. You, somebody's in the broadcast right now. It is, the Lord says the reason why you have been going through the turmoil and the suffering that you have been going through, it's not that he hates you, but the fact that he is threatened about you. He is threatened that you will take over his position. Oh, I hope I'm helping somebody right now. He is threatened that you are going to take over his position. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So the hatred is coming from a point of fear. Number three, the hand of God will bring back dead things into life. Hallelujah. It will bring dead things into life. The dead things that should not have died. There are things that are dead. Yes, that we need to remain, that would remain dead. But there are things that are dead that need to come to life. The hand of God came upon Ezekiel. Hallelujah. And gave him the ability to speak. And every dry bone came to life. The hand of God brought Lazarus back to life. The only thing that can bring a dead thing out and give it life, it's the hand of God. If he did it for Lazarus and if he did it for Ezekiel to be able to prophesy to the dry bones, therefore you will also prophesy to your dry bones this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and you will see them coming to life in the name of Jesus Christ. As I pray to everybody who is at the sound of my voice, I stand in agreement with you. I declare and I decree that the hand of God will fight for you now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. From today, the hand of God will fight for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I wish you could shout that amen while well. I wish you could shout that amen thunder well in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, the hand of the Lord will be upon his children for provision. He is saying to you and is reassuring you this morning, I am the provider and the sustainer. I am Jaira for a reason. I did not give myself that name for any other reason, but for you to know and for you to see my provision coming through for you. Hallelujah. It will be the solution to your generation. Hallelujah. The hand of God will make you a solution to your generation. Hallelujah. You will also be a provider provider to your family. You are taking out your family from the bushes to the front in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not come to the city and work and your people back home at the village don't know that you are alive. It is a very shameful thing for somebody, for somebody's parents to be sitting back home and thinking change is coming and they're sitting in hunger and you are here in the city. You are jolling in the city back and forth, but your parents are suffering back home. May that not be your testimony and may not be that the path that you are following. Hallelujah. Let the hand of God be so strong on you and give you the resources and the provision and remind you and give you the wisdom to know that you need to raise your family up in Jesus mighty name. The hand of God is upon you. You will provide for your plan, for your family, medical aid. You will provide for your family. He will provide for you and he will make sure of it that he, he, he makes sure that you also provide for your family in Jesus mighty name. Every husband that is represented on this broadcast in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, give them, let the hand of God rest upon them for them to be providers in their families and not to run away from their responsibilities in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, restore them in the walk, in your walk with the Lord to know that the hand of God, hallelujah, is upon them in Jesus mighty name. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my father, my father. So when the hand of God is upon you, you begin to understand that it makes things easy for you. And that is what the psalmist confirmed for us in Psalms 145. He says things will be easy for you. When the hand of God is upon you, you become loaded. Hallelujah. When the hand of God is upon you, uh, uh, you become loaded with benefits, with anything that you need. Whatever shall be beneficial and that you need to use in that situation shall be given to you in Jesus' mighty name. You are empty when you don't carry the hand of God. So today, take the hand of God and let it carry you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A loaded man is a needed man. Hallelujah. I want you to declare it in your comment section and say, I'm loaded. I'm loaded. Whenever you are loaded, people will come towards you. They are needing you. They need what you have. You are a loaded person. I don't know, Lerato, you are loaded in the name of Jesus Christ. You are loaded. There is a lot that is in your brain that they are waiting to unlock from you in Jesus mighty name. I hope you are hearing me, Lorato. The Lord is saying, I must confirm to you, don't doubt yourself. What is in your head is sufficient. What is in your head will equip you. You will be selling your intellectual property. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. When the hand of the Lord is upon you, you are loaded. You are a loaded man. Somebody declare it. I am loaded. I am loaded. Hallelujah. 
A loaded person is the person who's important in the eyes of men. Hallelujah. He will give you that stature. You don't have to tell the people I'm a very important person. No, they will know you are important because you are loaded. Hallelujah. In the eyes of God, every man is important because he created us. Yes, the hand of God can bring testimonies to your life. He can, as I said, all protocols are being bypassed for you. All protocols are being boycotted to move you forward, to move your business forward to this morning in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord laid it in my heart to tell those business people, those entrepreneurs that the Lord is the hand of the Lord is upon your business and he will move you forward. Don't forget to rely on him with all the business acumen that you are having, with all the skills that you are having for the running that business and all your marketing ideas. Don't forget to put God at the foundation. Don't forget to put inside every plan. Don't forget to put God in every thank you. Hallelujah. Seed for your business. Sow for your business. Sow seeds. Sow financial seeds for your business as well. Oh, Jesus. Karaba shotokodia maha. Li karoba shotakadia ha. The hand of God is the master key that you need, child of God. The hand of God is the master key that will open the doors that you need to be opened. Hallelujah. The hand of God will activate that thing that has not been working in your life in Jesus' mighty name. That thing that you have been waiting for it to be activated. That thing that will unlock your destiny. It is waiting for you today to call on it and say, I receive the hand of God in Jesus' mighty name. The hand of God will open the door that no man can shut. Hallelujah. No man can shut it. He's in charge. He's holding the keys to that door on the other side. Hallelujah. The hand of, of God can bypass every demon from your father's house, every demon from your mother's house. It can be bypassed by the hand of God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah seven times. Talk to me. Invite the hand of the Lord as you shout. Right now, I count you down. Number one, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The hand of the Lord, I invite you in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of the Lord has come on you. The hand of the Lord has come down and is pushing down your walls in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As you shout those seven hallelujahs from where you are right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the bulldozer is coming. Yes, you see it, and it can knock, and it wants to take you down. But the hand of God, but for the hand of God, it can and push the bulldozer away from you. I don't know what has been pushing you into a corner, but the bulldozer that is above any other bulldozer, the bulldozers of all bulldozers is the one that's pushing that thing back. You will not be pushed into a corner. You will not be cornered anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. The only thing that makes the hand of God have access to your life, child of God, listen to me very carefully. It is Kariaba Sonda. Mm. It is because you're a child of God. He has access to your life. He is in control. Hallelujah. Give, give God the opportunity to be God. Give God the opportunity to be, to be king and Jesus to be the Lord over your life. Let him be the one who's leading you. Oh, Kariabasata. It is an opportunity that you have been given to give your life to Christ. Hallelujah. If you are here on this broadcast and you have never given your life to Christ, I want to invite you right now, before I close in prayer, right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I want you to say this prayer with me and say, Father God, I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died on the third and, and on the third day he rose again and he rose for my sins. He rose so that I do not have to be living under a curse. I believe that he lives inside of my heart and He's the Lord over my life. He's king over my life in Jesus' mighty name. I declare, therefore, I'm a child of God. My sins have been blotted out. I'm white as snow in Jesus' mighty name. I am elevated. The hand of God is in operation in my life. Amen and amen. If you pray that prayer, please make sure that you also inbox me. Hallelujah. If you pray that prayer, make sure you are raising your hands. Give me a hand emoji. Let me see you. Hallelujah. My father, let your hand rest upon us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let your hand rest upon us and in all our families in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Let's begin to speak in tongues right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Oh, Jesus. Kalabasonda. This is a game changer, child of God. This is a game changer. Karabasota kalamashete kedia. How am I doing for time? Okay, 20 minutes. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Makoraba shikola masande dia masanda. The hand of God is upon my life. Aha, Let's turn our Bibles to Exodus chapter 9. 
Father, thank you. Thank you for giving me this guidance. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 9. I'm going to start reading. Let me just put it in quickly here. Oh, I hear the Lord saying that game changer. Tell your neighbor, game changer. It's a game changer. There's a game changer that is coming into play. Hallelujah. He says, then the Lord said to Moses, go into Pharaoh and say to him, thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. Mm. Let my people go that they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and still hold them, behold, the hand of the Lord will fall with a very severe plague upon your livestock that are in the field, the horses, the donkeys, the camels, the heads, and the flocks. There's four. He says, but the Lord will make a distinction. Verse four is very important. I want you to underline it in your Bible. If you really turn there with me, it's a game changer. Now tell your neighbor, it's a game changer. Now he says, the Lord will make a distinction. There's a game changer that is coming into play. There's something that was supposed to happen. There was a consequence that was going to happen, but he says, there's a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt. So there's a differentiation. There's the difference between what the devil can touch and the what the devil cannot touch. There is a distinction. Somebody saw shouting that comment section there is a distinction i am distinctified i'm distinctified my livestock is distinctified my family is dis dis oh my god this english is distinctified amen Verse 4 says the Lord will make a distinction. It will make the necessary differentiation between the livestock of you and me and you and them the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt. The Egyptians' livestock is separate from your livestock. Hallelujah. So that nothing of all that belongs to the people of Israel shall die. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that prophetic word. The Lord says nothing that belongs to you shall die. Nothing that belongs to you shall die. Verse 5 says, and the Lord set a time. Oh, somebody shout, it's my time. The Lord set a time saying, tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. Tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. And the next day the Lord did this thing. I, I don't know what is the thing, but I'm excited. Even just saying it, the thing that you need to do, God, do the thing that you need to do so that I'm distinctified. The thing that you need to do, Lord, make me distinctified today. That meeting I'm going to, to, this, to, to this morning, my God, distinctify me. Do the thing that you need to do today to set me apart from the rest. Do that thing that distinctifies me from the others who also came for the interview. Are you, are you, is somebody hearing for me? I don't know who's going for an interview today, but the Lord is saying he's going to do the thing that he needs to do to separate you from the other people that also applied for that job. Hey! Somebody needs to speak it to your situation. You need to speak it. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is that you want him to distinctify you from, but this is the moment. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing is so strong on me right now. Hallelujah. He says he did that thing when he said he was going to do it. There is a set time for the thing to be done. And the set time for me is today. This morning, I declare it, I decree it. I pull it down in Jesus' mighty name. It is here. It's manifesting the set time, that thing that you were going to do, Father God, that will distinctify me from the Egyptians that have been tormenting me, that thing that has been tormenting me, chasing me, those Egyptians, I will see them no more. And today you will confirm it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey. And the Bible says in verse, verse six, after he did the thing, the livestock of the Egyptians died, but no one of the livestock of the people of Israel died. Hey, God, thank you. Hey, God, thank you. Oh, Jesus. Is that somebody's word? I take it. I'm running with it. I'm running with it. I'm running. The Lord gave me this scripture just now as I was praying. Oh my God, I'm running with it. It's my time to testify. Can you tell your neighbor? It's my time to testify. It's my time. You need the hand of God. You need the finger of God to be free. You need the hand of God to fulfill your dreams. Are you understanding what verse one of that Exodus nine was saying? Exodus nine one was saying your dreams shall be fulfilled. He said, let my people go so that they can fulfill their dreams and they serve me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Father, I'm grateful. Can we begin to pray right now? Father, I'm grateful for this 2023. My game will change forever. You have brought the game changer. And this morning, my God, I thank you for your word, for the game changer. Every power that has been saying, I will not go and fulfill my goals this year. Every power that has been saying, I will not go and fulfill my dreams this year. Lord, I declare and I decree that it is destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, every obstacle that has been intended to affect our growth this year in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that it is failing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I speak to every obstacle that is intended to affect our growth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Today, it fails in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, for everybody that is at the sound of my voice, I declare that every pharaoh in their life, whether it is a spiritual pharaoh or it is a physical pharaoh that has been saying their goals shall not be achieved, let the finger of God pull them down right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare and I decree. Abena, you will testify. Mamjesa, you will testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Chido, Vimba, you will testify. Daddy, let your hand rest on me so that we can serve you in Jesus' mighty name, so that I can serve you. If nobody can serve you, I will serve you. If nobody can serve you, I know you said the stones will serve you. And therefore, God, for as long as I'm breathing, I will serve you. Let your hand rest upon me. Let your red hand rest on Vimbai. Let your hand rest on Apostle Mara. Let your hand rest on Abina. Let your hand rest on Celebration. Let your hand rest on Flag City. Let your hand rest on Lorato Masina in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody who's at the sound of my voice, this year your dreams shall not be cut short in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that your dreams will live in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak to every hindrance. I speak to every blockade against your free movement in the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of the Lord is uprooting every hindrance. The hand of the Lord is uprooting every blockade against your movement in the name of Jesus Christ. You will begin to move freely from today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, let your finger, with that finger, Lord, I decree that I have absolute freedom to serve you and worship you in the name of Jesus Christ. I hear the Lord saying, I must tell you that I am the Lord that is ready to fight for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 2 of Exodus chapter 9 says that for if you refuse to let them go and still hold them, verse 3 says, behold, the hand of the Lord will fall upon you with a severe plague. I don't know where the plague is going. My God, I did not sit and plan the plague, but whoever has been troubling my trouble, my troubler, my God is beginning to trouble my troublers. Oh God, oh God, trouble my son. Oh God, yeah. Let me actually call on the Lord of hosts. The, let the Lord trouble your troublers this morning. I want the whole army of heaven to come out. Let him trouble your troublers. I don't, let the plague, wherever the plague hits, oh God, I know I may feel sorry for them when I see them, but it's okay, God, do your thing. Do that thing that you are going to say, you said you are going to do tomorrow. Do that thing, oh God. Trouble my troublers. Let the plague come on their livestock. Let none of that plague touch my livestock in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, as we pray in any area of our lives where you know we need help, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, even when I don't know I need help in that area, my God, let your hand send help right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you this morning. I declare and I decree that even in the area where God, you didn't know you needed help. The Lord's hand is going right there. Is sending help in that area you did not even know that was supposed to be a prayer point. You did not even know your child was taking drugs. I'm talking to somebody right now. That thing has been kept hidden. You don't understand why your child has been behaving and trifling the way they've been doing. The Lord is sending his hand right now. His help is coming right there in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are that person, receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. If you know that you have been around your child has been abusing substances or taking drugs right now. The Lord is sending help for you right now in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the daytime, in the nighttime, the Lord will fight for you in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the night seasons, the Lord is saying, I will fight for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying, I will fight you for you on the ground. I will fight for you in the air. I will fight for you on the sea in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is 
is fighting for me. Somebody declare it with me and say, the Lord is fighting for me in Jesus' mighty name. Do you understand that the scripture that we have just received now, Exodus chapter 9 says that the hand of the Lord will separate you and your family from death and destruction. He's saying that the plagues that are going to visit on the Egyptians and the death that is going to touch the Egyptians, the death that is going to touch the witches and the wizards is not going to be visited on your family. He's saying, I'm making a distinction and I'm making a differentiation. The blood will speak for you. The blood that is on the doorpost will speak for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your livestock shall not be touched by the great hand of God. Somebody shout it with me and declare it again. By the great hand of God, begin to call on the Lord and say, Lord, separate me and my family. Separate me and my family by your great hand. Separate me and my family from a health crisis. I do not want any health crises. Lord, separate me from health crisis in Jesus' mighty name. Begin to pray that prayer right now. The Lord is separating you from health crisis and health traumas in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I need you to push. We are left with nine minutes. I need you to dig down in your spirit, man. Hallelujah. My God, by your great hand, oh God, we declare and we decree that you have separated us and our families from confusion. Begin to declare it now. I'm separated from confusion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I take good decisions. I take decisions that are based on the wisdom of God. By the great hand of God, I declare and I decree that the Lord is separating you and your family from poverty and lack. Right now, I want you to declare it and decree it. Right now, Tendai, I am saying that your family is separated separated from poverty and lack in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody needs to keep up with this declaration and decrease. You need to create it right now and you need to reverse some things. Talk to me, somebody. Separate yourself from poverty and lack. I want to tell you that he says by his great hand, he is going to separate you and your family from sluggishness and stagnancy. He says no longer shall you be lazy and no longer shall you be stagnant. No longer shall you be sluggish. I want you to declare it and decree it right now, my God, separate me from sluggishness and stagnancy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The hand of the Lord is upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He says, when I come in, I come in to guarantee you life and life in abundance. He says, there is nothing that at all that belongs to you that shall not be recovered. There is nothing that belongs to you that will die. That is in verse 4b of Exodus 9. He says it, he confirms it, he says, so that nothing I'm doing this, so that that nothing, I'm doing this the, so that nothing at all, nothing at all that belongs to the people of, uh, of Okariaba Sonda, you put your name there, the people of Israel shall die, nothing that belongs to Unista shall die, nothing that belongs to Mamjester shall die, nothing that belongs to Megan shall die, nothing that belongs to Apostle Mara shall die, nothing that belongs to Fortune shall die, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, because Lord, you have guaranteed that I will have life and life in abundance. Oh God, I receive by your great hand right now, begin to decree and declare in the spirit right now, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, declare it, declare it there in the comment section. I receive life to walk in holiness and light. I will walk in the holiness of God and I will walk in the light of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare by the great hand of God, the Lord is giving you joy right now. Physically, you will not die in the name of Jesus Christ. Spiritually, you will not die. You are resurrected. The joy of the Lord, which is your strength is overwhelming you and overflowing in you in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to understand that nothing means nothing. When he says nothing is nothing, he means nothing. Not some things will succeed against you. No, nothing will succeed against what you possess. Nothing shall kill what you possess. Nothing shall kill your destiny. Hallelujah. If you decree it and you declare it and you keep on warring and you keep on warring, this month, the finger of God will show up and it will carry you in the name of Jesus Christ. I love my God because he has sent this prophetic word that assures me that the hand of the Lord will set a time limit. He's not a God that is just a, a, a without a time limit. That is an open-ended issue. He says about tomorrow, this time, this thing will happen. Oh, Jesus, thank you for setting the time for my deliverance. And I declare and I decree the time for our deliverance is now as we have showed up on this protocol breaking prayer altar. Father God, we came to declare and we get we came to get our time frame. Lord, we thank you 
by tomorrow this time you will have done this thing father god as we have arisen this morning we declare we decree that today is our tomorrow that thing that you said you are going to do yesterday you are doing it right now in the name of jesus today 24 hours i'm saying i need a 24 hour miracle i need a 24 hour testimony do i have candidates who are willing to dare god this today who are saying in 24 hours that thing that he said he was going to do yesterday he's going to do it today that thing tomorrow is that thing tomorrow is now i need people who are saying that's me if that is you in the comment section i want to see you i want to see you declaring it and say that's me i'm 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 a candidate for that 24 hours pastor i'm that 24 hours i'm in 24 hours i'm going to confirm that that thing has been done that thing has been done in 24 hours oh jesus i'm feeling it i'm feeling it i'm i'm daring i'm daring i'm daring it i'm daring it oh god that thing you have promised it for me before i've heard this prophecy before i've watered on this prophecy before i've believed on this prophecy i've worked this prophecy in 24 hours if you know that you have done everything that the lord said you must do to work that prophecy he says in 24 hours it's coming to pass in the mighty name of jesus christ i am the lord your god in verse 5 he says i have set a time saying tomorrow the lord will do this thing in the land hallelujah he's doing it in your land psalms 102 verse 13 psalms 102 verse 13 he says you shall arise and have mercy on zion for the time to save her has come the time to pity her yeah the said time has come he is arising upon you you are the zion he's talking about in psalms 102 right there this just tell your neighbor the said time has come the said time for me to be favored has come oh jesus i still have four minutes i can still obliterate the devil in four minutes oh jesus i don't know whether you stumbled on this broadcast by mistake but you you stumbled on a bulldozer you stumbled on a protocol breaking child of god i'm just a girl who god remembered in the town called pretoria south africa i'm just a girl i'm just a girl who loves god i'm just a girl who serves god despite all the opposition i may face against all odds i choose to serve god i choose to speak for his kingdom i choose to obliterate satan i choose to deplete hell and i choose to populate heaven regardless of how they may think low of me regardless of how they may have rejected me i choose to say that my 24 hour miracle has come that thing that god said he was going to do in my life he's gonna do today in jesus mighty name that expedited promise that expedited letter that expedited finance my god the time of warring the time of rest is come lord is fighting my battles right now in the mighty name of jesus christ that thing that you said you're gonna do god do it now in jesus mighty name do it now in the name of jesus christ i said the thing that you want the lord to do is going to do it right now if you can just push further in the spirit right now beyond your wildest dreams the lord is going to surprise you i want you to pray and declare to him and say lord surprise me faster mm. Oh, Jesus, in the next two minutes, oh, God, help me to show up. Help me to show up and show forth your glory. Oh, God, help me to show up and announce to the devil that the lion is awake this morning and the lion will manifest today. Not only will I roar, but I will have tangible. I will be the first. I will collect all. I will be restored in all aspects. I decree that the set time to favor me has come in the name of Jesus Christ. I wish you could declare it also for yourself and say the set time to favor you has come in the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of the Lord confirms his promises. He says, I'm not a God that issues promises in vain. He told Pharaoh, he says, and Pharaoh sent and behold, none of his livestock was alive. Everything was dead. Father, it shall come to pass at the end of this season that we shall have no losses. I declare and I declare that everybody who's at the sound of my voice by the end of this broadcast, my God, they shall experience no more losses in this June, in this year of 2023. No more losses in the name of of Jesus Christ, my father, it shall come to pass uh, that at the end of June, at the end of July, at the end of August, September, October, November, December, Lord, we shall have no shortages, uh, nothing, no shortages, no shortfalls in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare over your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that it shall come to pass uh, that you will have no more regrets in the name of Jesus Christ by the end of this season, this season that you have been going through, this season of hardship that you have been going through, you will have no regrets of having waited on the Lord 
road, you will have no regrets because he will add a blessing and add no sorrow to it in the name of Jesus Christ. This 2023, by the hand of the Lord, you shall be favored in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to declare it in the comment section. I will be favored by the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is working with you. Oh, the Lord is saying, ah, you will not be cause any pain in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, kalama shoto korebeshe, i kalama soto koreama shonda kadadadadabasha. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. My Father, thank you. Thank you for your hand that is resting upon us right now. Thank you, Lord, that your hand is resting upon everybody who's at the sound of my voice right now. No more regrets. No more regrets. The hand of the Lord is resting upon us right now. In our families, it's resting upon your family right now. Right now, begin to receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, let your hand bring deliverance into those that are listening to the sound of my voice today. In Jesus' mighty name. Let the hand of deliverance come through in my life today. In Jesus' mighty name. I see the Lord transforming your life. I see the Lord transforming your business. I see the Lord transforming your ministry. I see the Lord transforming your marriage by the hand of God. By the hand of God, he says, I'm transforming your family. By the hand of God, I'm transforming your finances. By the hand of God, your career is being transformed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Your that thing is right now. Your tomorrow is right now in Jesus' mighty name. Tomorrow has indeed come. Oh God, my father. Let every door that is so difficult for me to open begin to open. Let your mighty hands open those doors, oh God. Father, somebody is here on this broadcast believing for open doors. They are believing you for open financial doors. And I stand in agreement with them, oh God. And I declare even for myself, oh God, open those financial doors in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, knock and keep on knocking. That is the template he gives us for prayer. He says, ask and keep on asking, seek and keep on seeking, and you will find and you will be answered and you keep on knocking knock and keep on knocking we are not going away we are going to knock on this door until the door opens until the person who's bearing the keys opens right now we will ask and we'll keep on asking we will seek and we will keep on seeking until we find we will knock until the door is open i declare and i decree that those doors are open right now the lord is opening financial doors for you the lord is opening those business doors i decree and i declare that the career doors are open right now by the hand of god those health doors are being opened right now. The door to your divine health is open right now in Jesus' mighty name. I decree and I declare that your academic doors are open right now. There's somebody who you have been coming to this broadcast. You have been having one prayer point. You have been saying that you have been applying for your entry into university for two years. I decree and I declare that that door is opening right now. If the Lord is going to shift you, I need you to spend time in the next three days where you are just quiet and alone and you are just seeking the Lord's face and you are praying prayerfully, the Lord is going to redirect you. He says, I want to give you a new direction on where you are supposed to go and what you are supposed to study. Let me leave it there. I decree and I declare that the ministry doors, because I haven't seen you, so I'm not going to spend too much time. But if you are that person and maybe you heard it, you can inbox me, hallelujah, and I'll expantiate. Those ministry doors are opening right now. For every person who's here at the sound of my voice and you are a minister of the word of God, I decree and I declare that those doors of ministry are opening up for you. You will not have to beg for pulpits. Hallelujah. The Lord will cushion you and the Lord will guide you in what you are supposed to be called for. The Lord will mentor you. The Holy Spirit will mentor you. The Holy Spirit will mentor you to, will guide you to that person that is supposed to be your mentor and your spiritual covering. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ah, karaba soto kodiaha. Chris don't want to declare it by the hand of God. It's coming. My father, hear our cries this morning. Let your hand be pulled down, hallelujah, to bring down every Jericho wall in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your hand pull down every problem, every shame, every trouble, that every affliction, every poverty. Let your hand pull down every affliction, every difficulty, every sickness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that reflects uh, uh, poverty in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let it be pulled down by the hand of God. Anything that reflects difficulty upon difficulty, any affliction you've been going through, receive the hand of the Lord upon that situation. I declare and I decree right now prophetically, the divine finger of God will catapult you to your desired mountain. I don't know what is your desired mountain that you need to be mounted 
mounted on, but right now it's going to catapult you right now to that mountain in Jesus' mighty name. I decree that the hand of God will take you from grass to grace. You are moving from grass to grace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The hand of the Lord is taking you there. Every power of darkness that will not allow you to go, they will see the strong hand of God. They will see the strong hand of God and you will progress. The hand of God will visit your enemies as we close. You must know that your enemies, wherever they are, whether they've made themselves visible or not, the Lord is going to visit them in Jesus' mighty name. Ah, kadia basata kadia. Receive the alignment of God. Hallelujah. The hand of God will fight for you. I decree and I declare that as from now, the hand of God will make a way for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The hand of the Lord will transform your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that your faith will not tend to fear in Jesus' mighty name, but you will rest in the hand of the Lord. Somebody congratulate somebody. Say, it's my time to testify. Say it in the comment section as we close. Please say, it is my time to testify. Tag some Somebody and tell them that it is my time to testify. Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for using me as a vessel. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that this day I am loaded. I'm about to release that thing, that thing that you put inside of me, that thing that you put inside of them. We are loaded. We are living here loaded. We are going to release that thing. Today is our season. It is our time. It is our set time to be favored in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you for everybody that has joined from all the platforms, YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok. And I thank you, Lord. And as I release them, oh God, I say, may good and mercy follow them throughout the day as we meet again tonight at 10 p.m. for Apostle Mara session and you see me again tomorrow at 5 a.m. Remember, he's a God with a time frame. I need to hear those testimonies. I need to hear those testimonies. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Testimonies are coming today. Testimonies are coming today in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, Brenda. God bless you, Chido. God bless you, Vimbai. God bless everybody who's on uh, Facebook as well. God bless you, Sneha. I see you. Um, who else is there? Hallelujah. Everybody um, that I've not seen, God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. If you want to watch the replay, the replay will will be on my stream at uh, YouTube, Fortune L Online. Please make sure you follow that channel as well. If you want to watch the replay on Apostle Mara, it should be there maybe by 12 midday um, as well. We just restream it for those that are on a different time zone, but it will be immediately available after this. Thank you so much. Thank you for those who are praying for me, for the hand of God to be upon my life as well and upon my family's life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for my intercessors who are also standing in the gap for me. Thank you, Lord, for those who are giving don't thank you lord increase them god let their finances even increase more surprise them father god father surprise our partners in ministry oh god those who have been partnering those who are partnering with the crusade who are saying the crusade this weekend must be successful who have sent whatever resources oh god increase them in jesus mighty name who have laid it in their hearts oh god let their plans succeed in jesus mighty name amen and amen god